Well, welcome everybody. It is now seven o'clock and we get ready to start our Bible study. Um, just a little FYI for you. If you want to make sure that you're able to see the, um, for those that are on, that can see the visual, if you want to make sure you can see the PowerPoint, you may want to pin Pastor James's um, piece right in the, um, you know, pin it so that way you will always see him um, or the PowerPoint presentation uh, as uh, as we are actually in the same room. So his sound is off. So it'll always pull me up as the speaker if you're using the speaker piece. So we're going to have Pastor James start with prayer and then we're going to get started. All right. Let us all look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that this is our opportunity to come before you to hear from your Holy Spirit, Lord. We pray that you would bless each and every person that has an opportunity to participate, that they would receive wisdom and discernment from on high and strategies on how to build great divine relationships with friends and with their mates. Lord, we know that you are able to give us everything that we need in order to make great decisions, in order to constructively handle conflict, in order to even hold ourselves accountable for a high standard of a, of a healthy divine relationship. So today is our opportunity to lean in and to get the strategies and tips that can be most helpful in us both creating and maintaining and even repairing relationships so that they would honor you in everything that we do. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray and we can say amen and amen. So before we jump into the overcoming dysfunction number four, uh, we're talking about relationship team building. And when we're talking about this team, we're talking about you and your mate, whether you're married or you and the person that you are dating. So just a quick overview, I mean, a quick review of last week, we talked about lack of commitment and we talked about commitment as that ability to dedicate to a cause and activity. And in this, this um, case, we're talking about dedicating ourselves to um, our relationship. We talked about buy-in and we said, that's this place of honestly coming in and bringing our emotional support. And then we talked about clarity and that's that removing the assumptions and the ambiguity from a situation. So we're in this place of saying, okay, we're going to do the work. So we talked about openness and communication. Um, we talked about making sure that we were spending that time in building the relationship. And so um, one of the things we talked about when we said looking at clarity, we talked, we came from Habakkuk 2 and 2, and we were saying how you're going to write down the answers and make it plain. And so we're going to even pick up a little bit more of that in today's lesson. Um, we talked about, you know, we're stating, um, we're making sure that we're stating our path, and then we're also helping the other person explore their path. And so um, that was just a little bit of what we talked about as we now come to this fourth point, which is embracing accountability. So the first question we really want to start off with is how do you define accountability? So think about that for a minute. And while you think about that, Pastor James is going to kind of give you a little thought maybe around what he might say um, accountability is, or maybe some examples. Um, if not, we still want you to give us an answer of how do you define accountability? Yeah, I, I think accountability, we really have to think about it as a way to help each other really uphold the best standards of what we've agreed upon will be how we interact or how we relate. And so it's really having courage mm -hmm. to really deal with some of issues that might be um, sensitive, they might be emotionally charged. Um, they may be things that may be a little bit uncomfortable. At the same time, these are really important, critical things that help for the growth and development. Sometimes even the, re no, I shouldn't say sometimes, even the restoration and repairing of relationships. So accountability sometimes in a business sense gets a bad rap. It's like, oh, somebody's trying to you know, micromanage me or hold me accountable or nitpick me. No, we are thinking about this in the much broader, both spiritual and practical sense of being a necessary interaction that helps all members 
of the relationship party hold up to the standards and values and 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 keep things and and improve things going forward that's Pastor great Jewel? so 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 who wants to who wants to come off mute and answer that how do you define accountability before we move on and share with you what the the author of the book says so do i have any volunteers or you know we can go into the volunteer so who <laughs> volunteers Well, all right, come on. Thank you, Miss Tiffany. Well, I'm gonna be volunteered. <laughs> no, <I'm scared. laughs> no, but I what I think accountability is is like um holding someone responsible for like whether it's their actions, what they say, what they do. Like for example, if um you gotta like have an accountability partners for like um I don't know, um I guess for anything like behavior, if you if somebody's gonna if someone says they're gonna um, do something, just holding them responsible for um, what they said they were gonna do, and also it's like um, helping them to meet their action or their goal. Right. Right. Per se. So, um, like if you're saying um, you don't want to do anything, like um really I guess negative in terms of um I don't know if, if you if, okay so if you have a problem with uh drinking or something like that mm -hmm. so you hold them accountable for uh that person not to be um drinking so you'll um check up on them um maybe um having them not to be in like different uh, atmospheres where they once were Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking in terms of accountability, just holding someone responsible and um, just helping, like, and helping too. And those are good answers. So I'm going to tell you what um, the next slide, on the next slide, it talks, this gives you the answer of what the author says. And it says, um, accountability, I define accountability as the willingness of team members, and in this case, I put in parentheses, couples, to remind one another when they are not living up to the performance standards of the group. And so, again, this group, I'm defining as not showing up to the relationship. Um, and it, even if you see the picture, it says accountability is the glue that ties commitment to results. And we're actually going to talk about that in next week. But the writer goes on to talk about accountability being willing to enter the danger. And when he defines this danger, what it means uh, is this willingness to call out their behavior or performance. I would also add it's this willingness to be held accountable um, to living up to what we have set as the goals as a couple. So we are willing to show up and hold up. That's what I, I wrote. We're willing to, to show up and hold up. So we're willing to show up based on what we have agreed upon. And we're willing to hold up the standards we set in this relationship. So it's a show up and a hold up um, type of thing. And so uh, in order for this accountability to work within the, the team or the couple, each person must have this willingness to confront difficult issues. Uh, and when we talk about difficult issues, that doesn't mean that they're all bad. It's just it's difficult because of how important they are to the health of this relationship. So we got to be willing to do the deeper work to uncover what is hidden from us. So what do you want to add to that, Pastor James? Yeah, I like this um, image that accountability is the glue that ties commitment to results. Because ultimately, when you come to an agreement and you make a commitment, you know, nobody's perfect. So sometimes you don't always live up to what that commitment was. Yeah. And if you have a kind um, accountability partner or mate or friend, they'll bring that to your attention. And most people were like, okay, you know what? You're right. Now I can do that. And that's where you get the result. The result mm -hmm. comes through the action. It's one right. thing to say it. It's one thing to write it. But the results are the actions, right. the behaviors. And over time, it's those behaviors and actions that actually help to build and strengthen and sometimes even re repair relationships when trust has been broken. Because yeah. a lot of this boils down to 
you're trying to build trust. And when trust is not there, obviously you have issues that need to be addressed. Yeah. And, and even before we go on to our next question, we're talking about this accountability. I like something you said about what happens like if trust has been lost. Um, this is the place where a lot of times in relationships, you can lose trust for many of reasons. Um, you know, you, you, you can lose trust in a person. And so when we're, if, if this relationship is important and you've made a decision that we're going to build, even though there's been a lack of trust or trust has been lost, um, that person has to be willing to do that extra work, right? To make sure that they're accountable, their accountability then is really becoming that glue to tie them back to making this commitment um, to be together and to seeing the results happen. And so there's sometimes you'll see in relationships when one of the parties has done something, whether it's infidelity, whether it's just whatever it is that has made um, that, that relationship break down. And then you have people say, well, I said forgive, I, I asked for forgiveness, so they should just move on. No, 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 no. This is where you got to do that extra work of making sure you are holding yourself accountable so that that person can regain trust or so that person can um, feel comfortable again making that commitment um, and that trust. So that just that just kind of sparked that. And I just thought that was important to, to, to tie that in to even as we're talking about accountability that because we're not perfect, sometimes, unfortunately, there are things that can happen in relationships where it, it can look like the relationship is going to dissolve. But once you take it to the Lord and the Lord say, no, this is the relationship that still needs to be built, then you got to be willing to do that extra work to try to bring that back to where um, it needs to be. So I just wanted to throw that in, you know, so that, that kind of sparked that. So the question we then have is, what are some key areas that are important to you in 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 a relationship if you even kind of see and and for those that may can't see the slide it it has uh, four lines where it says accountability 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 but then parts of accountability are highlighted count is is highlighted ability is highlighted and act is highlighted and so really it's saying you know part of accountability is we got to count the cost um and then we have to be willing to we have the ability to be accountable and to act on what things are, are key to us. And so um, communication, I see, is one of the things that was put in the, in the, in the comment. Um, so Pastor James? Yeah, I, you know, while you guys are thinking about that, one, you know, one example that I can say personally is, you know, me and Pastor Jewel, from my perspective, it's important that that Pastor Jewel kind of considers my opinions and like feelings about how we spend our family time, just to kind of understand where I'm coming from. You know, that's that's something that's important to me. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm curious, I see um, Tamika indicated loyalty and honesty, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and feel free to share more around those words because they, they mean a lot, especially loyalty. Um, and even communication, if you're able, because I know you might be, um, if you're not able to, to speak, no worries. Um, totally understand that. Um, but just want to give you guys space if you want to just share a, a sentence or two around loyalty and honesty or communication. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I chose communication because sometimes um, you want to be an account accountability partner and hold the account, but that person don't really understand the detrimental of their actions or behavior towards you as their guidance per se. Thank you for that comment, yes. Communication is critical because sometimes you have to communicate, I would call, um, you would have, you have to communicate impact yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting. I was just listening. I can't remember where it was. Sometimes in, in relationships, um, that one example was you can have an intent that is good, right. but your words have an impact mm -hmm. that is negative on the other person. Right. And in those situations, you know, when that person who 
kind of felt that negative impact when they communicate back to you. You know, when you said this, it made me feel like that. Right. It's really important when we think about repairing relationships and restoring and, and, and keeping the lines of communication open. It's really important that the person who said that, even though they in, didn't intend the impact was negative, that they say, you know, I'm sorry. Right. But just just that. Not I'm sorry that I hurt you. or I'm sorry about but I'm sorry that that happened, because sometimes you need to know why that situation hurt that other person. Right. And so it's good to say, I'm sorry, give, take a breath. Make that a full sentence. A full sentence. <laughs> and, and then ask if it's okay, can you share more so right. that you can get understanding, Yeah, which is absolutely critical in any relationship. Yeah. So I'm glad I that think, you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, because I think sometimes people will say, I'm sorry, but. Yeah. And, and that but kind of negates yes. what you just put on the front end. Um, and that's not the intent, but you have to say, sorry, I'm sorry, um, period. Then what you do is, like you said, then you ask, can you share? Yeah, if like, they can, right? If you if can, can share. And sometimes, like, you know, with Pastor James, I've, I've had conversations like that. First of all, I appreciate that he wants to know more of what, so what I will do is if I don't have the answer at that moment, because sometimes you got to process your own yes. feelings, you got to process how you responded. And so then it's a thing of, I don't know yet, but let me, we'll talk about that or I'll come back. Um, um, you know, that type of thing. And so um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure, Tamika, what, what your question about, is that not a spirit of offense? So I'm not sure. Um, what that was related to but the other part going back to your loyalty and honesty you, you I like what you said you said people can be loyal but still be a liar so I think that's interesting so really I wouldn't say they're loyal I would just say in that sense then they are more in terms of uh, what's the word I would use more about they're going through motions they're like maybe going through the motions of being in a relationship, but they're really, because if they're lying or doing anything that's contrary, then they're really not loyal to the relationship. They may just be comfortable with where they are. And so it's more of doing things out of being comfortable or doing things more out of this is just what I'm used to um, versus loyal. Because if I'm loyal, then part of my loyalty is I'm going to make sure that I am honest with you so it is it has to be that that combination of me being loyal but also being um honest is as we as we continue so uh if you want to kind of give us uh yeah. to make if you want to explain that a little bit more um so we can make sure we we understood and can answer um sometimes oh, okay so um there's scars yeah. So you mean in terms of the way people are responding, um, they're just covering up their scars. And, and, and this is the thing, that's why I will keep going back to, that's how come we, when we started this, we, was, we definitely said there has to be the answering of the question of who are you in relationship with? Because if you are responding or taking offense, maybe that's what you were talking about, um, Tamika, if a person is taking offense, being offended when you are saying, hey, this is this is how your actions, you know, come across to me. If you're taking offense of these things and not taking it in for understanding and learning, then that goes back to where in your past did confrontation or being told about your actions then automatically put you in this place where you're being kind of defensive. And so uh that's why it's really key that we continue to make sure that we are working on our sales amen amen um so those are been those are good so let's moving on part of what um well, us asking those questions around you know what was important in relationship was because we we have to get to this place of areas of accountability and so um, 
um, so we have, so there, those are some ways that we hold ourselves accountable. And so one of the things we want to talk about a little bit comes from uh, the book from um, Dr. Smalley and it's called, I Promise. And so one of the number one things we talk about accountability is, and I'm gonna let Pastor James answer this one or talk about this one for a moment. Yeah, so what, what I can do is just is share the scriptures. Um, I know we have the references there, but I'll read them for everyone's hearing um, in the New Living Translation. So Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And then Matthew 15 and 18 says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. And Psalms 119 and 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so what Pastor Jewel laid out, you know, a primary area of, accounts, of accountability is, are my beliefs conformed to God's truth? Right. And right. I don't know if you want to share a little bit more around that in particular. Right, because sometimes what happens is, you can get into relationships and because your expectation uh, is that this spouse, this, this mate is going to be the one that brings you your total source of happiness or that this person is going to be your place of peace or joy. Um, you know, some people have this expectation that when they get into a marriage that like, all of everything is going to be peaches and cream and you're going to be running through the tulips. Um, no, you're two very human people that are going to come together and you're going to have to continually work. And so the, the point around, I believe that he's trying to say is who God, who is God is this thing of making sure that our beliefs line up with God, because there's also, that's one piece. There's also this, this thing where, We've heard from people about what marriage ought to be under God. So, you know, when you get married, she's got to do all of the laundry or, you know, you're the man, so you got to wear the pants and you got to put her in a place. And, you know, I've heard these kind of statements and none of that is biblical. In fact, to be honest, when you read scripture around like the, the, the what, what, how God looks at marriage, I found it interesting because most of the scriptures that I found kind of was directed at me and, but it was around this thing of, you know, um, cause I think, I can't remember, the, I, I don't, don't give me the chapter and verse. If I need to look it up, I will. But there was a scripture that even said that if a man is not taking care of his home, God considers him an infidel, you know, basically a heathen that you're not taking care of your family. So you'll have people to say, well, God has called me to ministry. So I'm going to drop everything. I'm going to do ministry. And I don't, and I'm not supposed to worry about if my family get fed or eat and have shelter. Mm, no, that's not biblical. So that's what we're talking about when we say, are my beliefs conformed to God? And we do have a couple of scriptures that we want to read a little bit of. I'll read the first one. It says, above all else, guard your heart for it affects everything we do. And that's Proverbs 4.23. And I believe the importance of that scripture is that why we got to guard our heart is we got to guard it for two reasons. We got to guard it to make sure that I don't put James as much as I love him. He can't sit on the throne of my heart. He can't be my God. He's my husband. He, yes, I, I love him, but he can never replace who I am to be in God. And so we got to be careful because you can get to a place where you can make your spouse your God. Um, and I've seen it where people like, oh, well, my husband ain't doing this, so I'm not going to do this. If my husband don't you know, serve God, I'm not going to serve God. Urgh, hold on, Jim Shoe. Mm -mm. I love this man with all my heart. But if he decided one day that he don't want to serve God no more, deuces because i'm not gonna stop serving god that's mm, 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 no we're not going out like that so it's this place of making sure that you hold god in the right place um the next scripture um yeah matthew 15 and 18 but the words you speak come from the heart that's what defiles you mm -hmm. so the motivation and the things that you love um, if they're not aligned with God's intention and his pathway and his, 
his his um law that he has for holy living for your life, then you're out of order. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that out of orderness will start to become come out of your mouth in the things that you say. Right. Uh, right, right. Psalms 119, 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so part of this thing is, I would also say to those that this is not just once you got married, I would say to those that's dating, don't, don't become spiritually um, stupid. <laughs> don't become like spiritually illiterate. And what do I mean by that? You're in the word, you're seeking the Lord, you're studying, you, you're showing, you know, you're, you're, you're living for the Lord, but now this may come along and now all of a sudden you, you throw all of this, this, the word away because your focus is so much on just, you want this person to be pleased. And too many people end up with relationships that, that won't work for them because they stop trusting in the word that got them to their to that place in the first place in the in, in the first place. And so you don't want to ever move forward in a relationship when you know that this the the biblically it's just off. The person is off in their belief system, they're off, but you, you know, we we should need, we should have checked that out at the beginning. But just in case you missed it, because sometimes people are really good at giving um, the, the spiritual mask so they can look and say all the right things, but you always have to be diligent. That's why you can't, you, I would never try to walk into a relationship just on my, on my abilities, my, my personal assumptions. I would definitely be like, Lord, give me the ability to discern so that I can know if what I'm hearing is coming from the person's, truly from the person's heart, or they just saying something because they trying to get next to me. Amen. So, um, we're going to move to the next question is, and that is, um, have there been times in your life where your expectations hadn't conformed to God and how did he show you that? And, and what did you do? And if you notice, like, even it here says wrong expectations lead to disappointment. So I think Pastor James got a, uh, an example for you. Amen. So y'all remember Pastor Jewel was being transparent in some previous times. He's like, when is Pastor James going to be transparent? <laughs> So um, here's my transparent moment. Um, so right before Pastor Jewel heard from the Lord, well, right as she heard from the Lord that she needed to go pursue her doctorate, I did not want her to do that. I was like, wait a minute. I know what time commitment a doctorate requires. I know the amount of study. Not that I have one, I just heard about this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll play one on TV, but I don't know. But I knew that it was going to take a lot of time for her to focus and to actually complete the work. And so I was selfishly like, no, I'm not really feeling that. I'm, I want her to be available for me at the house and whatever I want. So that was really where I was. And my expectation was like, no. No, that's not really what's up. And of course, the Lord convicted me and showed me that it was necessary for her calling that she do this work. It was a requirement to prepare her for her next. It wasn't all about me and what I wanted from my lovely wife. <laughs> it was more about what God had called her to do and how she needed to prepare herself for the next. And so, you know, once I got a revelation from the Lord, and then I was her biggest cheerleader. Yeah, and, and not only was he my biggest cheerleader, because I, I, I cried when we talked about this the first time, but he not only became my biggest cheerleader, he became such a great support because there were times when I was like, I'm quitting. And he's like, no, you can do this. And, um, and what you guys don't know, there was this, this opened the door for a lot of firsts for me because I had never traveled by myself. So the first time I went, I actually, that was the first time I ever had flown by myself. I, I was even talking to myself going to the airport going, child, you are so pathetic. I mean, this is just a pitiful because it was just like, I was so nervous um, just even stepping out and, and doing this. And so it was the first time I had actually been away for like a week by myself with nobody else making the decisions for me 
um, in a whole new place. So, um, but we don't, that only happened one time because after that, every, every time I had to go for my intensive, he would take off and take me. So he would drive me there. He would drive me back and forth to my courses and my classes. Um, and I just really appreciated the sacrifice that he did. But see, this was what was to me that was really interesting. I didn't think about it to just now. God in God actually did still give him what he wanted. He wanted time with me. So guess what? Every, even though it took a lot of work, we would travel. And so during that time, you know, going, we had time, it was just us because it wasn't the kids. We were in the hotel after um our um you know, after my classes and stuff, we would go to dinner, we would have time to talk. Sometimes if 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 we got some breaks on homework, if my homework was finished, we might go do something. So we actually had this opportunity to do both. And so sometimes it is when you're willing to to change those expectations, then God can can help you. So anybody's have that, I know he's like, well, that was a long answer, but what has anybody had that kind of situation where you have had the wrong expectation and how did God help you to, to change that around? And also I saw that uh, Leslie wrote when we were asking about some of the, what are your, uh, you know, kind of things that are important to you in relationships. She said, um, um, intentionality and service are some of some things that are important to her. So anybody got any uh, input on that question? Everybody's expectations always been 100% aligned with God? We had some very smart people then because my expectations weren't always aligned with God. <laughs> they still don't always be aligned with God. I, I can hear some and I'd be like, okay, Lord, that means it's coming right now. And he'd be trying to say, no, Jewel, just because the promise was today don't mean it's coming. Just because it was told you today don't mean it's coming today. So, And it don't have to be, you know, as deep as mine. Right. It's <laughs> you don't have to be a deep one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, thanks, yeah. Stephanie. Thanks, Marceline. Yeah, she said just then going back to school. Yeah, that going back to school thing is is something. Um, so, all right. Well, let us move on. So, our next thing that we want to talk about is this this um, so when we're talking about this accountability. So, some ways of of to make sure you stay accountable is first of all, we just got to stop complaining about everything. Um, and, and so the way the Lord said it to me is we have to get on this gratitude page and off this entitled page. And so I will kind of give an example of myself. Um, you were scared. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, you know, sometimes what happens is it, in relationships specifically, um, we can, it's like, how can I put it? It would be like me saying, okay, Pastor James, I want to spend some time with you. And he decides to spend time with me, but then I got a complaint that, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't watch the movie I wanted to watch. Um, or it could be a thing of, what'd you say? I said that never happens. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be the, um, you know, just this thing of, I want one thing, I get it, but then I'm still complaining because I, I had this expectation um, more than what, um, uh, what I wanted. And I appreciate that because that's part of what, where my complaining would come from. Uh, Leslie wrote, my problem was I expected to read my mind. So I was constantly disappointed that he wasn't meeting my unknown expectation. And that's part of sometimes where this thing about complaining because we weren't specific enough. So it's this thing of, okay, I want you to do, I want you to do something, but I didn't give you the details. So you're doing it best, you're doing it, he's doing it, or you're doing it based on your assumption of what that you think, and then you're still getting a complaint. So part of this accountability is making sure we're not leaving no fuzzy areas. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Stop judging others wrongly, yet also be willing to hold each other accountable to truth. So it's this balance. So there's a balance there where you're not overly judgmental, 
and and at the same time, when situations arise or behaviors or actions or things are spoken that are not aligned with what you have agreed upon with your partner, mate, friend in the relationship, that you are able to call that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and 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 even just you know, before you go off from that, it's this not only be willing to 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 do that balance, but on either side, if you realize that you're off, just the, the word I'm sorry is is actually a good word. It's one that we should just practice. Just say, just wherever you are, just say it out loud where you are. I'm sorry. Just just say it. You just sometimes you just gotta be willing to say I'm sorry. You know what? I I I I didn't see that right. I, I was only seeing it from my perspective and I didn't see it from yours. Um, and I realized that's for me was a lot of my complaining. When I go back to that, stop complaining. A lot of my complaining was because I was seeing it wrongly. I wasn't seeing from James perspective and it goes back to even less. And so I was expecting this, this mind reading thing of, you know, and, and I, I, it's, it's interesting enough, I saw something today um, and I was telling Pastor James, I thought it was really interesting. We were doing this particular study and I saw somebody that had done like a research project about these unexpected roles within marriage and how there's, you know, you just expect, okay, she's the woman, she's gonna do all these things. Um, and so sometimes when things are getting done, you have this frustration and so, uh, and I think the woman, one of the things she said, she's like, you know, I'm tired of expecting him to read my mind. Um, she says, so some of my frustration is he's not a good mind reader. Um, and so the thing is, there's, there's not a good, you know, there's not a good mind reader. And so uh, we got to learn. And, and I love what they said. I was like, y'all all in my study. But one of the things they said is a lot of times people don't stop and think of their family as like an organization or that it's, it's a, and for us, it's, we, we use the word team because with a team and organization, if you started a business, you're not going to just open your business and hope it just, just runs itself. Because guess what it's going to do? It's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. So it's this thing of saying, you know what? Let's make sure we balance this out and, and we work um, things together. So um, the other thing is you got to stop trying to change your mate. You aren't the Holy Spirit Junior. You're not the whole, God did not leave you in control or charge to make sure that your mate is changed. In fact, I'm just gonna be transparent. Majority of the time, when I used to go into my very special prayer time to tell God about what he was doing uh, to me that I didn't like, God would put like, it was like God would list, let me tell all that stuff. And his response to me would be like, well, what about you? What you mean? What about me? We ain't talking about me. We talking about him. We talking about how he just hurt my feelings. We talking about what he did. The Lord's like, no, I'm talking to you about you. He is responsible to me. You are responsible to me. And I was like, yeah, but Lord, but but you gonna handle? He said, I that's not that's not your job. Your job is not to change your mate. It's our job to pray for them, which is actually the next point. It's, it's our job to pray for each other. It is our responsibility to pray for each other. Um, now, I'm not saying you don't tell each other the truth about some things, but I can't change. You know why I can't change him? Because I can't change me without the Lord's help. Somebody give me an amen on that one. Amen. Pastor Jay. <laughs> oh, what? Yep, that one. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So, um, you know, one way to hold each other accountable is to go to church together. You know, obviously, if you're dating, you got different churches, maybe you can make an agreement to come on special occasions right. or events when possible. Yeah. But again, spending that time together, and this goes back to other um, practices and principles around you want to know how individuals, if you're dating, how they are able to act, comport themselves, respond in different scenarios. Because if you're going to be with them for a long time, you're probably going to be in different scenarios. And so it's good to kind of get an understanding of how people are able to um, comport themselves 
in those different in those different um you know arenas so to speak yeah and i just want to add here too that i don't think a lot of times what people think about is if you're both attending different churches and you're getting to that place of talking about we want to get married and marriage you really do need to have a discussion on are we going to go to your church this church or are we going to find a new church and we, we so we need to seek the lord to see where he wants because sometimes people just make assumptions oh you're the woman so you got to come over here to where the man is but that not that may not be what god is saying god might say i want both of you to go to where she's attending or god may say i want both of you to go where where he's attending so this is a place that don't this is again one of those things you don't just hope it works out you actually just say you know well, where where god where would you we're at this place of talking about coming together and um being married where where do we where do you want us to attend where is the place where do we go um now i know there are some couples that don't go to the same church that's a choice i particularly just think it really is good for them to be in one house together because then once children start coming and you have children you want to be able to grow your family and make that a to me a very important time um together so and the last piece on this one is um discuss together what you are learning in your quiet time amen so i know this is a big um learning this was a growth area and learning area for me especially when I was working outside of the house, because as I shared before in earlier lessons, sometimes I would run out of words by the time I got home because I'm like, all, I'm grinding all day. I'm talking, I'm not talking, email. I'm just like, I didn't, I'm like so much communication. I'm, I'm really like done. And being done and not being able to discuss what I learned maybe on the drive or how I, you know, what the Lord was saying to me was not helpful in Pastor Julian Hour individual not individual but our growth and relationships so you know discussing what you learn in a quiet time is is a way to share and we'll, we'll touch on that because there are levels to this communication and so as we go forward we're gonna we're gonna unpack this a little bit more right right so we're just gonna um we had a question what are some other ways you can think of to help hold each other accountable to the building of a relationship so we want you to actually because we want to make sure we cover the other things so um you know, as you think about that, put those in the comment, in the chat, drop it in the chat. So again, what are some other ways you think of that we can help hold each other accountable in building our relationship? Because I like this, this um, picture that I have here. It said, great teammates hold each other accountable to the high standards and excellent, and, and, and I can't even talk. And excellent. Thank you. And excellent their culture expects and demands. So Again, when we talk about teammates, we're talking about we are teammates. James and I are teammates. Who you you in relationship? You are teammates. And I'm gonna tell you why I keep using that analogy is because see the enemy sometimes, especially when you're having fights or disagreements, want to make you think you're each other enemies. We're never enemies. We're always on the same team, and so we're gonna hold each other accountable to the standard. What standard of excellence? An excellence is the standard that God gives us, and so that leads us to our Amen. next um, place Bring it together. Amen. So areas of accountability, communication through love. Yeah. And so another way is that to make all of our communication um, with Idra come from a place of love. And so no, while we're talking about um, prayer and uh, I mean, uh, while we're talking about romantic language is important in a relationship, uh, we're speaking here about love that considers your mate's needs, temperaments, and all of that when engaged in conversation. And so part of what I see is um, some of the other ways of holding each other accountable is I hear when we're together, um, through prayer, fasting, devotions, actively listening. Um, and so those are all key, respect. Those are all key ways of really making sure we're holding each other accountable. So when we talk about these levels, there's several, with six actual levels of communication. So the first level is we, what we call small talk and reflect words. And, and pretty much that's, that's kind of the, the conversation when you talking to people, um, James could say, you know, Jewel, how you feeling? Okay. Um, you know, it's this thing of, you know, we're at dinner, just, you know, pass me the salt, pass me the pepper. 
Um, it's these kind of one-liners. Um, it's nothing necessarily wrong with that, that kind of conversation, but the problem comes in is if couples don't continue to work on their communication levels, you could just find yourself with these one-liners, these one word, um, and, and, and really sometimes, even if you've gone to level six, five or six, if you're in this place where you're angry and not really dealing with them, you come back. These are this, these kind of places where you revert back to uh, and you check out, or this is your way of kind of protecting yourself so that you don't have to really deal with the deeper things. Yes, yeah, so number two, level two, communicating impersonal facts. So this level of communication is simple, you know, everyday exchange of kind of external, non-personal information, like, you know, the weather is cold, I'm burning up, you know, can you believe what President X did? You know, this level is really about exchanging general facts, but they don't require, you know, those in conversation to go deep. It's friendly, it's safe. But remember, this is not about, this is not the space to settle nor to make an informed decision about who you are in relationship with. So if you only go on to level two, you really haven't gone deep enough to understand that, um, you know, some of the more important factors yeah. that determine, you know, whether your relationship will be a healthy long-term one. And sometimes this is where people make major decisions yeah. because it's safe, it's friendly, you know, you both can agree upon it. And, 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 and sometimes people just kind of stop there. Um, but ultimately we have to go deeper. Level yeah. three. Yeah. And before we go to level three, I wanted to um, put that up. Um, Marcy says silence can, yes. can actually, you know, make or break a relationship. And so um, that's why it's important for us to really commit, continue to communicate. And so when we talked about level three is the sharing opinion. So this is the doorway to the more meaningful and satisfying levels of conversation. So this is where you share your opinions, your concerns, your expectations, but it is also the place that can cause conflict when two don't agree. But guess what? We shouldn't run from it, but embrace this level because this is how we learn more and more about each other. To be honest, this is when... You like you hear people say, oh, we've moved from the honeymoon phase. To be honest, level two is kind of that honeymoon phase because all we're doing is we're totally just agreeing with everything. Oh, so okay. oh, I just realized he loves pizza. <laughs> I love pizza. Oh, I my favorite food is this. You know, we're it's vibing. We're vibing. You know, oh wow. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. But then the problem is you need to move from the honeymoon phase into the deeper place in terms of really saying, and I'm not talking about honeymoon and relationship, but Amen. that kind of newness, you got to move deeper so that you really realize, you know, who is this person that I am trying to get into relationship? And then that moves us to this level four. Right. So this is when you start sharing those deeper, those deeper feelings. Um, this is for those who feel safe enough that they can freely open up and reveal their deepest, deepest feelings to each other as well as having that sense of security in that, in that relationship and in that communication. So if one or the other doesn't feel secure, this is when that person may revert back to one of the previous levels. What causes this? Not handling conflict well or engaging in belittling conversations where you're being a little more judgmental. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that even is hearkening back to some unresolved issues that you have. Right that you haven't kind of resolved yet to the point where you can actually engage in a healthy, more, more balanced way. Level five. So level five is sharing the vital relational needs. So by the time you get to level five, we're really talking about these needs, physically, mentally, spiritually, and mostly being um, really handled with the, or taken care of or, or, or um, really um, handled in the right way. And so this is specifically when you're talking about marriage, this is this deeper marital love and satisfaction. And so this level really relates to your mates feeling cherished, wanted. And so these are vital to a marriage. In the dating relationship, what I would say this is the physical part ain't met yet because you ain't supposed to be doing nothing physical, but mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, you can still be satisfying those areas within the relationship. Why? because the person feels safe with you, even if we don't always agree, 
We've learned how to respect one another so that when we come away from these conversations, I have a deeper appreciation for you. You have a deeper appreciation for me. And now we're learning more and more about ourselves, which takes us to level six. Right. So this is where you're really communicating your beliefs. Now, we've touched on this a little bit, but it's vital that what you believe biblically, biblically must be continually shown in and through the relationship. It needs to show up in actions. It needs to show up in behaviors. It needs to show up in your in what you say. And there needs to be some integrity between what you believe, what you say, and what you do. Right, right. And so, um, and so in, even though this is level six communication, I really believe level six should kind of be sprinkled in throughout. Right. You should sprinkle that throughout because even when you're doing the small talk, the beginning where you're doing the small talk, still kind of sprinkle in what is my belief system. And to be honest, some of the reasons why we probably don't is because we have not yet come to that place of feeling completely safe um, with this other person yet. But as soon as you can begin to tell and to begin to understand who we are, that needs to show up immediately. And so, um, so we just want to talk about these, uh, we're kind of uh, wrapping up embracing accountability, these key points. Accountability requires us to have a correct belief and expectation in one another. So, I mean, we've been harping on this throughout this time is that we got to believe rightly who we are in God. We got to believe rightly about what we should have expectations from one another. I love the example, you know, I, you can't expect him to be, you know, Houdini and, um, you know, do magic tricks. And he's supposed to now, you know, he's the great mind reader. He or she's the great mind reader. They can't read your mind. You got to talk. I, I got to open the mouth and talk. So we have to have these right expectations. Uh, accountability requires us to hold one another accountable to the goals, the plans, the spoken and the written word uh, expectations that we have. And they got to be healthy expectations. Um, Pastor James was talking to me about writing some things. And so something that he does, you know, share that a little bit real quick. Yeah. So um, one of the ways, the, one of the ways I kind of hold myself and hold us accountable, you know, as a family, as a team is like, I have a whiteboard. And so I know that there's certain things that we've committed to like Bible study and exercise, time with the family, having fun, doing the work that we need to do for provision. And so I kind of write that on a whiteboard and just use it as a way to kind of keep it in front of us so that we can see kind of how we're measuring up against what we said we've done. Yeah, yeah. So accountability, the last point is accountability requires us to willing to do the difficult and dangerous work. What's the dangerous work again? It's the showing up, being transparent and saying, I'm going to invest myself um, because one of the reasons sometimes we, we don't invest ourselves because we don't want to be hurt. Nobody wants to be hurt. But, you know, relationship building requires us to be willing to be brave enough to risk it so that we can see the outcomes of what we, we desire in our relationship. So I pray that this week was good. Anybody got any comments, any points, any thoughts um, before we um, kind of move on to the homework area? No, no questions, no comments. Is this making any sense? Is this helping in any way? All right, we got an amen. All right, thank you, ma'am. Amen. All right, so next week, we will be talking about overcoming dysfunction number five, focusing on results. So we kind of been touching a little bit about that even um, today. And so our homework uh, is, what does this statement mean to you? So be ready to explain. We're going to start off at the top. It says, if, if team members trust one another, engage in healthy conflict around issues, commit to decisions they make, and hold one another accountable for for those decisions, there's a pretty good chance they're going to make it. So what do you think that the writer was really trying to uh, relate to us in this comment? Also, 
Remember, if you have any kind of relational questions, make sure to provide us with those. And you can even send it to us in advance. Um, we had some other, okay. Um, okay. Because they don't have this tech. Either. No. And so, um, I, but I, I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, so even if you have some questions, you are more than willing to send us the questions, um, you know, via, you know, in the in Messenger or whatever. If you could just send them to us so that we are able to, um, to uh, answer those in our time of class. So uh, you can give your tithes and offering. The cash app is the dollar sign, capital A, capital L, capital W, worship, CTR, which is CT, the capital C. Or you can do us from Zelle, which is 773-420-6835. Or you can use the email. Um, also this week, uh, our announcements, we have our session, our, our healing. Uh, actually, this week is going to be deliverance part two session. Um, so uh, Prophet Orr, she took us through that. Um, that was really a beautiful opportunity. So we're going through the second part of that on this Saturday. I will also be doing um, the Zoom for those that aren't on the premises, but want to Zoom. So you can let me know if you're going to be available for that. I will make sure we send the Zoom. So that's from noon to two. Also tomorrow, uh, I am back for Mountain Movers, and we're talking about advancement taking territories, and tomorrow's lesson is going to be first things first. So again, uh, we pray that this was helpful, and um, we will continue and finish out this month just talking about relationship matters. Um, right. Is, are there any questions? If not, we will pray. And let you go. We got three minutes to hold spare. Any questions? Um, Any I got a question. Yes. What if you don't really want the relationship anymore with that well, person? Well, my first question is always the women that I have talked to is I ask them, what did the Lord say? <laughs> well, honestly, he didn't say anything. Well, so then this is the sex thing, second thing I tell you. I, I tell people, if God didn't give you a definite yes, you don't make a move. So I would tell somebody, until God gave you a definite, this relationship is over, then I would, I would take that into a matter of prayer and praying and asking the Lord to show me where I am, asking the Lord to show me what steps to make. And I will continue to pray because at some point, God is going to give you an answer. And sometimes he don't give an answer like right away. But that is, that is really my counsel. It is, what is God saying to you regarding, um, you know, the relationship? And if he hasn't said anything, uh, then, then that's a place that you have to continue to seek him because you want to make sure, you want to be sure that you didn't make a move or a person doesn't make a move based on their current emotional state or their, their current emotional frustration. Um, and the Lord may say it's time to move on, but I would have, I would want to make sure that's what he, I am confident that that's what he has, has said for me to do. Yeah. It's not with my spouse or anything. It's with, you know, it's just, no, no, no. I, I, I that's why I said anybody, not necessarily okay. it was you. Um, but that, that would, that's really kind of the general way that I counsel people because, um, and, and, and like when I have counseled women that was like, okay, I, I'm going to leave this marriage. I was like, okay, well, what did the Lord say? Well, he ain't said nothing. I said, okay, well, did you ask? And sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll respond like the, you did. Then generally I was like, well, do you really want to know? Let's go on a fast. And I, and I will say, let's take a, let's take a time of fasting and I'll fast with you and we'll wait to see what the Lord say. And, and majority of the time, well, I, to be honest, I ain't heard nobody yet where the Lord told them to lead a relationship. He generally had told them to trust him or some other things. And then um, we, we see years later, we're glad that they didn't leave those relationships because God worked it out. So, but that was a good question. Anybody else have a question or a thought? Can we go on a fast together? <laughs> Who was that? Me, because I'm like, 
Oh, close, close, to, the, close to the brim with this person. Okay. Well, uh, yes, you and I, we can do, we can talk offline and, and we can, we can work, we can work on some things together. So absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for just continuing to teach us and help us to grow. So father, we ask that you would give us the tools and sharpen our tools so that we can rightly show up uh, in our relationships, not only in our marriages, but in our relationships with people, um, with others, um, with our children. We just want to do relationships in a healthy way and a right way. So Father, we just thank you today. We give you the praise for it all. Now just continue to have your way in us. Uh, we thank you for your continued guidance and steps uh, that you lead us in. I ask you to bless all of your children that are here, those that even may watch the replay. Father, I thank you for your, your blessings today. And I thank you for just continue to walk with us. So we just give you the praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All um, right. Good amen. night, everybody. I'm going to get good you. To Jocelyn. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't have my Facebook, so you might have to like call me or text me on my cell phone. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.